So uh, the next speaker, who is the last speaker of today, next speaker is Professor Ji Hyung Kang. Ji Hyung Kang, Kang is an assistant professor of KAI's uh, Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in the Department of the Materials Science and Engineering. Uh, professor Kang received his bachelor's degree in chemistry from Seoul National University in 2020 and then studied under the direction of Professor Ta Takujo Aida at the University of Tokyo, obtaining his PhD in polymer chemistry in 2017. Then he started his postdoctoral research at Stanford University with Professor Jenan Bao. And Professor Kang has published many high impact research papers, including those published in science, nature and technology, nature biomedical engineering, and nature biotechnology. Now, Professor Kang focuses on dynamic supramolecular chemistry and their applications to healthcare devices and energy storage devices. So please welcome Professor Kang with a uh, big applause. So can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So thank you for kind introduction and invitation to this wonderful symposium. So I'm uh, Ji Young and I'm assistant professor in the Department of Some Material Science Engineering at KAIST. So today I'm going to talk about some of our recent progresses on some material, some solution to realize the uh, highly stretchable and highly soft some electronic system. So our group, the, all of the members, they are kind of the, some designer, some dynamic soft materials. So we are designing some new molecule or some new polymer and new nanomaterial based on the uh, organic synthesis and also the, some supramolecular chemistry. So by using the, these two different synthesis, we are making the, some new material. We call this uh, some dynamic soft material, which can be uh, some stimuli responsive and self-healable or some adaptive. And based on this new material, we are looking for the, some new opportunities in the, some healthcare application and also the, some energy storage application. But because of time restriction, I'm trying to today talk about mostly on the, some healthcare application. So one of the research goal in the, our group is to, to making the, this kind of some standalone, some highly integrated, some stretchable electronic system. So we have uh, this kind of the stretchable substrate. And on the, that substrate, we put the, a lot of the, some electronic component, including the IC chips, or antenna or sensor, various kinds of components onto there to making the fully functional and standalone devices. So once we make the, this devices, we are trying to make uh, some freeform, freeform system so we can stretch it like here. So through the last like uh, six years, based on the, my research experience, I found a lot of the, some challenges in the viewpoint of the uh, material. So first challenge should be uh, some low fracture toughness of the substrate. So substrate is a kind of the main carrier component for this electronic system. So it should be a very durable and should have a very high fracture toughness to be used for a very long time. And, sec uh, and second challenge is uh, based on the uh, some interconnective line. So since we are putting the, a lot of the component there should be uh, connected based on the uh, some stretchable interconnecting lines. So this line is a kind of the important role for some electrical, some mechanical communication between a lot of the components. So however, the most of the stretchable conductor for this interconnecting line, so they have a problem in that their resistance change during the stretching. Once you stretch it, there's a change of the dimension. So it is inevitably to have uh, some resistance changes through the, their line. So therefore we need to overcome the, this problem. And third problem should be uh, some denomination issue. So in contrast, the uh, this stretchable system upon you stretching, so all of the some mechanical stress or some strain will be localized onto the interface between the, a lot of the component. Then therefore they can be easily delaminated from the uh, stretchable substrate. So based on these three, I define that these challenges and we give us some new material solution onto the that three challenges. So first one is making the very tough and self-healable and stretchable substrate. So before going to the detail, let me briefly explain how, how, how the some polymer network looks like. So for the uh, soft, some substrate, like a stretchable substrate, they are based on the uh, some flexible polymer chains. So PDMS or PEO or 
polycarpolactone, all of the low TG polymer chain can be used for the elastomer. And they are crosslinked by the, uh, some chemical bond. So based on this chemical bond, finally, they start to have uh, some mechanical properties and they can be a uh, free standing. However, once we are just focusing on the uh, some chemical bond, so like a covalent bond for this cross-linking, upon you give a lot of the stress or some strain above the certain level, so all of the bond can be broken, then they are fractured like here. So therefore, they have a problem in the some st high stretchability and also the some high fracture toughness. So therefore, people start to looking at the uh, other chemical bond. So we use the uh, some dynamically cross-linkable some bond, so dynamic bond. So dynamic bond is a kind of the non covalent bond, so they can break the, their structure and reform the, their bond autonomously at the room temperature. So therefore, this bond is a very dynamic. They can be broken and they can reform the bond. So therefore, if you give a stress to here and some of the bond can be broken like here and they can dissipate the energy, and at room temperature, they autonomously reform the, their bond and they can restore the, their properties. So however, once we use the uh, only dynamic bond as a cross-linking part for polymer network, they have a certain problem in the mechanical properties. For example, we are using the, uh, some low TG polymer chain. So therefore at the room temperature, this polymer chain can move. At the same time, we are only using the, some dynamic cross-linking moiety. Therefore at the room temperature, they can continuously exchange their bond to each other. So therefore, in reality, if you look at the, their creep test, they inevitably form the, uh, some plastic deformation. Of course, the more extreme cases is like a more gun. So once you use, you can stretch it like here, but they cannot, rec they cannot recover their structure like here. So therefore, in order to use the, this concept, like a dynamically cross linking polymer network, we need to think about how we can more like a toughen the, this network with keeping the such a very nice properties. So therefore we come up with uh, some very great idea to toughen the some dynamically cross-linkable polymer network. We use the, uh, of course, to use the same dynamic bond. We decide to use the two kind of the dynamic bond with the different like a bond strengths. Like a one bond, it should be uh, some strong bond and the other bond should be a uh, very weak. So therefore we put the, uh, some like a bond strengths gradient in the cross-linking. So therefore, if you give uh, some stress, what's happening to this system is only weak bond can be broken like here. So therefore, the, this strong bond can keep the, their structure and the elasticity. And based on this template, the weak bond can very rapidly reform the, their structure so that we can give a uh, good mechanical functions. So here I just put the uh, three kind of the, some dynamic bonds. So most popular dynamic bonds should be uh, some hydrogen bonding interaction. So we can easily tune the, their molecular structure. And based on that, we can also tune the, this kind of very different, some bond strings and also their dynamic city. And second example is so we can use the, some metal ion coordination. So this is a very directional, therefore we can precisely tune the bond strings and also their some dynamic city. And third example is uh, some dynamic covalent bond. So this is a very real like uh, covalent bond, but they can exchange uh, their bond in the, the solid state. So among the these uh, three bonds, first I focusing on the uh, this hydrogen bonding interaction to construct uh, such a beautiful network and with the very beautiful some mechanical some properties. So here I just put the uh, other figure. So we have uh, like a two kind of bond. So first one is the strong one, and second one is a weak bond and they look like here. So we are focusing on the hydrogen bonding interaction. So one of the interactions should be uh, this kind of the urea. So this two bond, both of them are based on the BC urea. We have a two urea at the end, but differences is the, uh, their structure. So strong bond one, we have a urea, but with a very high symmetry and looks like a rigid one. And the other one is looks like uh, asymmetry and uh, this looks have uh, some many, some steric hinders. So this is actually polymer chain. So we have uh, again low TG PDMS and we just uh, connecting the, this polymer chain with a strong hydrogen bonding unit and the very weak hydrogen bonding unit. And both of them, if we look at the structure, this one based on the this symmetry structure, this two urea group can form the uh, four hydrogen bond 
in the very cooperative way. But this case is because of steric hindrance and also the flipping of the, uh, this central cyclohexane. So this two urea group cannot cooperatively form the bond to each other. So therefore they are following the semantic cooperative Heidelman interaction. So even though we have a same number of the urea based on the, this molecular structure, they finally have the very big differences in the bond strengths. Of course, uh, based on the calculation, we can imagine that just uh, maybe double all the bond strengths. But in reality, because of the some multivalent effect based on the, this cooperativity, so actually their bond strength difference is uh, like a five times or six times based on the NMR analysis. So therefore, once you make the polymer, we are just uh, deserving them in the solvent and we are just uh, casting. So at the low concentration, so they're fully dispersed like this. So all of the polymer chain should be solvated by the solvent. But upon above the some certain concentration, they start to interact to each other and form the some pre-cross-linking network. So we found that the only a strong one can form the their bond at the, this concentration. So based on this strong bond cross-link pre-network system, they can reconstruct the weak bond and they are finally reached to the, the this beautiful some polymer network. So anyway, so our network, we have a two bond. One is a strong bond and the other one is a weak bond. And based on that, we reach to the very excellent some mechanical properties. So first one should be a, some high stretchability. So our material can be stretched up to the like a 3000%. And second is a very high fracture toughness. So even though we make uh, some notch inside of the film like here, if you stretch it, then all of the stress will be localized onto the, this notch. So in general, like a conventional PDMS, they are rapidly like a propagation of the, this notch and they can be fractured. But because of the very high fracture toughness and efficient, some quick breaching effect of the our network, we can stabilize the, this notch up to the, like 1,200%. And of course, the, we are just based on the, uh, some dynamic bonds, so we can also achieve the, some self-reliability. So even at the room temperature, even on the water, so they can reconstruct their, their bond from the, their damage interface, then we can achieve the, this excellent self-reliability. So based on this good fracture toughness, one of the, their applications should be uh, some bio-implantable application. And based on the high fracture toughness, we can easily suture this substrate onto the tissue. So in general, PDMS is uh, widely used for the stretchable substrate. But during the suturing on the tissue, there's uh, all of the fractured part on the here. So therefore we cannot use this one for the uh, some bio-implantable application. However, our material, because of the high fracture toughness, we very successfully suture the, this material on top of the uh, tissue. So we can fix our devices onto the target tissue here. So this is a summary. We just uh, making the, some new polymer, which can construct here uh, two kinds of the different dynamic bond with the different bond strengths and making that just a nice network that we can achieve the like a high mechanical toughness and also the high elasticity. So here the role of the strong bond should be uh, keeping the good mechanical strengths and also the keeping the elasticity and weak bond. The role of the weak bond is a very rapid energy dissipation and so that protect the, this strong bond from the external mechanical forces. So recently we just expanded this concept to make the more tough and the much stronger some safety level, some material for various application. So here we also use the different dynamic bond inside of the, this polymer network. But here, instead of using the two different, some hydrogen bonding interaction, we use the one should be a, some dynamic covalent bond and the other one is uh, like a covalent like very strong, some quadruple hydrogen bonding U UPY. So here disulfide bond is uh, based on the, uh, this aromatic surfer. So they form the, this disulfide bond. Of course, at room temperature, without the, any, any bond, they are very stable. But if the two di disulfide bond is located like here in the near, but then at the room temperature, they can start to shuffle. So they can exchange a bond like here. So therefore we can use the, this unit as a kind of the rapid self filling system for the polymer. But once you only use a, this disulfide bond, we cannot achieve the good mechanical properties. Therefore we use the very strong hydrogen bonding unit like here. So this UPY, so based on the, uh, this template, so this is a quite rigid and all of the unit very cooperatively, they form the, this quadruple hydrogen bonding. 
and their bond strength is almost similar to the uh, some covalent bond at the room temperature. So therefore, by, by using the, these two different some dynamic bonds, some moiety, we achieve the really high mechanical strength and also the high stretchability. So in the previous system, we are just a uh, maximum stress of the our material was like one megapascal. But based on the our new molecular design, we can reach to up to the like a three, 30 like a megapascal stress level. And of course, we can also achieve the self reliability here. So if you look at the, their comparison to the other material, it shows the really high fracture strength and also high fracture, high, high toughness. So therefore, with this small pieces of the material, we can lift up the uh, six kilogram of the object without any fracture. And of course, uh, because of the high fracture toughness, even with the notch, we can also lift up the six kilogram. So it means uh, truly our material show the really good mechanical strengths compared to the other some materials. So based on this new material, actually we can focusing on the uh, some dynamic function with this, and we can fully tune the uh, their polymer chain. So previously we used the PDMS, but beauty of the some synthetic chemistry, we can change the backbone. Then finally by using the this poly couple lactone system, we can also achieve the new function as a, some ionic conductor. So by mixing the, our polymer with uh, some ionic liquid, then we can make a ionic conductor. And based on the, this uh, very tough and self healable some ionic conductor, we can make a very good sensor. So our sensor is a kind of the, some like a multimodal sensor. So it can sense the strain. At the same time, it can also sense the temperature. But because of the, their also online parameter, so we can achieve the strain insensitive temperature sensing at the same time, we can also achieve the temperature insensitive, some strain sensing. So based on this sensor, we thought that this is a very suitable for the, uh, some soft robotic system. Therefore, we may be making the gripper with our self-healing polymer and putting the, our multimodal sensor on the disc gripper to make uh, some somatosensitive soft robotic system. So our system, we are using the top self-healable polymer as a gripper. And we put the, uh, a lot of sensor on the gripper so they can sense the object at the same time, they can detect the, uh, how much we actuated. So therefore, based on the uh, sensor and the gripper, we finally achieved this kind of very excellent tough and self healable somatosensitive soft robotic system with our polymer. And here I'd like to move to the other example. We can also expand the test system into the, uh, some metal ligand interaction. So metal ligand interaction, we are initially focusing on the beauty of the counter and ion. So of course, in the hydrogel or in the presence of the solvent, we can ignore the some effect of the some counter and ion because the counter and ion is just for the some charging neutrality. So however, once we focusing on the like a condensed polymer some system without any solvent, then all of the counter and ion should be very located near to the their complex then we think that this counter ion can affect us significantly on the uh, some mechanical properties of the polymer network. So therefore we just uh, screened the uh, many some counter ion. So we found that uh, if we select uh, two different counter ion, one is a uh, breaching anion and the other one is a uh, coordinating anion, then we can also achieve the very excellent strong bond and the weak bond hybrid system. So therefore once we mix uh, this uh, two bond, finally we can achieve the really high stretchability and also the high toughness compared to the other count and ion. So therefore our concept on the uh, strong bond and the weak bond can be easily expanded to the a lot of the polymer system. So it can be a basic some design rule for some very tough and self healable polymer, some materials. So next is the, uh, how we are just making the, this uh, insulating polymer network for the functional, some conducting materials. So basic methods should be uh, just a mixing too. So we have a good polymer material, but if you want to make uh, some electronically conductive, then one of the basic points should be uh, just mixing the some conductive nanomaterial with uh, this polymer. So based on that hybridization, we just uh, focusing on the, some elastic conductor first. So first example should be uh, mixing the some this uh, nanowire based some conductive network and hybridization with our polymer. So what we found is the uh, when this nano network is located into the uh, some self healable some dynamic polymer matrix, 
And because of the uh, some movement of the polymer chain, this uh, nano network start to have uh, some dynamic function. So for example, so we making the like a silver nanowire based nano network with the, our some circular polymer matrix. So it can show the very excellent some damage resistance. So even though you scratch the surface till they can keep the good electrical function without any problem. Then finally, we start to increase the power of the scratching. Then finally, there is a significant damages and the light intensity decrease. But important point should be uh, they are recovered uh, their light intensity very autonomously. Then we finally look at the uh, more like a quantitatively with the different like a scratching some strengths. So up to like a four neuron, still they can keep the, some very good rapid rec recovery. So upon scratching, initially we just go up, but they go down. So this is the first step should be uh, some contact between the damage surface area and get the, some function. But if you look at the more longer time scale, you can see the some continuous decrease in the, the electrical resistance. It means the, over the time, some nano network reorganization of the, their system, and finally they reconstruct the, uh, their electrical function as well. So if you look at the SEM, so upon damage initially insulating, so we cannot see the any inside of inside of the metal, we cannot see any some nano network, but over the time, finally they reconstruct the network and conductive, then finally we can visualize. Then of course, yeah, not only some mechanical and uh, electrical self-healing, they can also mechanically like a heal. So therefore we can see the uh, once again stretch it and keeping the good electrical function. And based on that, not only limited to the uh, like a 1D material, so they can be also expanded to the 2D. So we can also mix with the 2D like a silver flake and silver flake can be well mixed to our polymer and inside of the polymer also the silver flake can move. So once you give uh, some damage, there's an electrical resistance increase. But if you keep the test train, they are reorganized that their silver flake, some percolation pathway, then they can again boost up the uh, their some like uh, electrical conductivity. But anyway, we achieved a very high electrical conductivity by using the silver flake. And based on the polymer, we also achieved a high stretchability. So this is uh, quite easy making the conductive and the making the stretchable, but their significant problem is that they have a very significant electrical resistance increase during the stretching. So therefore, not, not using the silver flake and also the not like 1D nanowire, we start to focusing on the uh, some liquid metal. So liquid metal means uh, some liquid state of the metal at the room temperature. So at the room temperature, this gallium-based liquid metal is uh, actually liquid. And their surface is uh, stabilized by the, some native oxide. But liquid metal, because of liquid state, so we need to use to have a, some like a polymer matrix for the, some mechanical some properties. So therefore, many people start to mix with the, this liquid metal with the polymer. But once you mix the polymer, they also have another problem. It's uh, initially they are insulating. So once you make the, this uh, liquid metal to the, some like a microsite particles, their surface is uh, some native oxide of the gallium, so gallium oxide. And once you mix it with the polymer, so polymer trying to stabilize the surface oxide there, encapsulate the, that all of the liquid metal. Therefore, there is a no percolation pathway from the, uh, this liquid metal particles. So existing method to make a conductive. So what they do is just applying the mechanical like a pressure or scratch it to break down of the surface of oxide of the, these particles. Then because of the surface oxide, like a rupture, so there's a leakage of the liquid metal. Then pure liquid metal just spread out to the, uh, their system. Then finally we can make a conductive system. So however, it is uh, quite easy, but it's uh, not controllable. And we cannot use uh, such kind of the material for the, uh, some system level devices. So therefore we come up with uh, some new idea to achieve the long range assembly of this liquid metal particles. So we applied the, uh, some like uh, ultrasonic wave, so like a acoustic wave to the directly to the, uh, this composite. So not on the solvent. Then the, all of the acoustic wave go in, into the, this polymer matrix. Then finally they induce some like a cavitation inside of the polymer matrix. So therefore selectively from the, uh, this uh, large particles between the, this large particle, some nanosite liquid metal particle is uh, generated 
from the uh, acoustic wave. So therefore, we are making the very excellent and the defect free this network with the uh, large and liquid metal particles as a main framework and making the, some nano side liquid metal particles as an interconnector. So here they have a very interesting some deformation behavior. So if you stretch it of this system, what happened to them is the uh, only large liquid metal particles is uh, deformed like this. And this interconnector, it is a uh, behavior like a more solid so they can keep the, their structure and they can keep the, their interconnecting site. So based on this, we are, uh, we check the uh, actual their structure by the SEM. So this is the initial stage of the uh, mixing the liquid metal particles with the polymer and all of the particle is uh, dispersed like this. So as you can see, there is a very long distance between the particles. So however, if you apply the acoustic wave into the, this composite, then this large particle start to generate the many, many some nano side particle between them. And finally this like uh, nano side liquid metal particles interconnect the original some large liquid metal particles, then we can achieve the very conductive some network. So here I just put the data. So our liquid metal conductor, LMP net, is show the really high conductivity. So they are almost reached to the uh, theoretical effective conductivity of the uh, this liquid metal. It means the, uh, they have uh, almost a no defect. All of the liquid metal particles uh, participated into the uh, population network. And most important feature is the, uh, the electromechanical behavior. Because of the unique deformation mechanism of the, uh, our network, we finally achieved uh, like a negligible resistance change up to the 500%. So up to the 500%, as you can see here, there's uh, no resistance change, even though they have a dimension change. So therefore this should be uh, almost ideal, some stretch of a conductor or like a printed circuit board or some high density electronic devices. So one more thing we found that very interesting is that their mechanical toughness. So original some components are here, but often they are making the nano side particle there, then they are going to be more like a uh, much tougher. So this nano side particle is a kind of the stiffening effect, and also the a lot of the surface area or their connection, then finally they also can toughen the system. And based on the uh, this uh, tough some like uh, material function. Based on the beauty of the uh, some polymer engineering, we can also achieve the very tough addition with a lot of the electronic component here. And of course, they have a very good mechanical robustness here. So based on the our some stretch of a conductor, we think it is ideal some material. So therefore, we are making the very complicated and the high density, some bilayer, some elastic PCB here. Then we integrate a lot of the electron chips with the via and then making the real functional standalone devices. So this is one example, we just put the, a lot of the micro LED on top of the hour line, but we didn't use the, any encapsulation, just to put the, their chips on top of the here. And based on tough addition, we can easily make uh, some fully functional, some stretchable display like here. And based on the uh, more chips and the sensor, we also can make a health monitoring system like a PPG sensing. So our PPG sensor, even under the strain to their high function very well. So therefore we also can apply to the other, some healthcare devices based on our material. And we're just focusing on the acoustic wave to make uh, some polymer network, uh, some liquid metal network in the polymer. Then based on this observation, we just imagine that, oh, this method can be universally applicable to the, uh, all of the polymer metrics around the world. So therefore we used the, from the hydrogel, like a uh, kilopascal region of the polymer metrics and up to the, some epoxy system, like a one gigapascal. So therefore we can fully tune the uh, mechanical properties of the, uh, our, some conductor based on the polymer selection. And they, all of them show the very excellent, some electrical properties, regardless of the polymer metrics. So, Important thing is you know, if we carefully select uh, some functional polymer metrics, then we thought that we can put the new function to the, our liquid metal system. So for example, first it should be uh, some photoresist. So if you make the, some photoresist with our, some liquid metal particles, then we can achieve the high resolution patterning like here. If you use the, some hydrogel for the metrics, then you can also achieve the uh, really low impedance 
some hydrogel, some liquid metal system. So it can be used as the uh, low impedance electrode for the some bio signal sensing or electrical stimulation. And of course, if you look use the uh, some self healing material, then we can also achieve the self healable some liquid metal system like this. So third part, this is the last part. So we are just focusing on the some delamination issue. So therefore, we I make the some new material which can be uh, some very adhesive to the uh, any surface so that we can stabilize the interface by the this uh, new materials. So tough adhesive layer between the component with the, our new material. So first component should be a circular polymetrics. So this is a role is such as a energy dissipation and just like a good symmetrics. And this is a new design. We call this as a interface crosslinker. So we have a polymer chain like here. And at the end, we have a, some puff flow of azide like this. So this puff flow of azide is a kind of the universal crosslinker. So upon giving the light or the heat, so this azide group can easily attach to the any polymer surface which have a CH bond. So therefore, they have a CH abstraction, then they can bind to the any surface. So therefore, our approaches to make a tough interface is a kind of the a topological adhesion. So let's say you have a two polymer surface. If they have a different surface energy, they cannot adhere each other. So therefore, we just uh, tuning the surface with uh, some our interface crosslinker and making that their surface energy with the uh, self healable polymetrics. So if you tune that this polymer symptom with our new crosslinker, then we can modify the surface and fix with the light. And after you putting the self healing polymer metrics, then self healing polymer trying to travel on top of the, the stitched surface and they are topologically entangled. So based on this technique, so we achieved a really high adhesion energy with uh, various kinds of the material. So we think that this can be a very universal, some tough adhesive interface layer to the stretch of electronics. But by chance, we found a really interesting some observation. So we found that the interface layer is very important for the uh, some fracture mechanical behavior of the symptom. So if we consider the, some polymer symptom or some metal or ceramic symptom, so we need to consider the two situations. One is the freestanding and second one is the uh, symptom on the substrate. So freestanding cases, so they can be easily fractured because of the stress localization effect onto the defect of the film. So they rupture at the smaller strain than the, their bulk some structure. But if you put the, this symptom on the, this substrate, so because substrate can retard the uh, stress localization, so instead of the, this complete fracture, they start to form the, some micro crack formation on top of it. But we are always uh, putting the symptom on the substrate Therefore, we need to focus on that this system. But if you consider the, this mechanism, so we need to consider about the effect of the interface or some adhesion of the uh, this symptom on onto the this substrate. So therefore, I just put the our new some interface layer on top of on between the polymer symptom and also the substrate. So this is a uh, without our interface layer. So, so we put uh, some as an example some polymer semiconductor, like a P3HT or ISO indigo based DPP. So they are kind of the high mobility, some polymer semiconductor. So if you put the, this uh, symptom on top of the this substrate, if you stretch it at the 50%, you can see the, a lot of the, some micro crack here. But if you put the, our interface layer onto them and stabilize the, their interface, we found that even with the same polymer symptom, they can be stretched up to the 100% without any noticeable some micro crack. It means this truly this interface adhesion layer can fully modulate the behavior of the uh, top polymer symptom. So what is uh, their mechanism? So we put the polymer symptom on top of the, our layer. So in reality, instead of the tensile stress, there is a generation of the shear stress. Then shear stress trying to delaminate the, this substrate there just look right onto the, their defect. So however, because of the, our good interface layer, they can relax the stress localization and avoid any delamination, then finally we avoid any problem of the crack formation. Then one more thing, this importance of the interface layer is the cyclic durability. So if you look at the, this system, if you put the plastic film and the elastic substrate, 
So if you look at the, their cycling mechanical behavior, they're very, very different. So this plastic film upon release, so there's a lot of the residual strain and the heat terraces, but substrate, there's no heat terraces on that. So therefore, in the initial stage, they're forming the, a lot of the crack here. But if you repeat the cyclic test, you can see in large micro crack on top of the film, and uh, they are almost the uh, fractures. So however, once we use the, uh, some good interface layer, instead of the, uh, some making the crack, they adopt the, uh, this kind of wrinkle formation. So since we are using the, some dynamic bond chemistry, they can reorganize the, their structure and relax the stress between the plastic film and the substrate, and they adopt the, this wrinkle formation. So therefore, based on the, this top interface layer, this interface layer is kind of a dielectric. So we can use the, that layer as a dielectric and directly making the, some fully stretchable organic transistor. So with the, any some high mobility polymer semiconductor up to the 100%, we can see the beautiful transfer curve with the high mobility. So it means uh, by using the, our interface design, not only avoid the denomination and also the modulate the real their fracture mechanical behavior of the polymer symptom. And this concept is uh, also applied to the, a lot of the other semiconductor and also the conducting material, even the gold film. So they are changing, they can change the, some fracture behavior from brittle to the ductile so that we can improve the stretchability of the, uh, any polymer conductive symptom and also the, some metal film. So today I just talk about the uh, three Topics. So three is a material solution for to realize the standalone stretch of electronic devices. So before finishing the my talk, I'd like to thank the, our group members and the funding source. So thank you for listening. I'm I will be happy to answer any question from audience. Uh, thank you for the great talk. So I'd like to ask questions from the chat uh, window. The first one is, thank you for your interesting talk. I wonder that have you tried to control the orientation of liquid metal interconnects using an acoustic field in matrix? Uh, so thank you for a very good question. So maybe question should be about the controlling the orientation of the liquid metal. But in our system, we didn't control any orientation. We just applying the, some acoustic wave to the whole of the line and making the, all of them active. But of course, uh, later we can selectively activate the, some part because the acoustic wave can be reflected by the metal film. So if we use the, some metal mask, then we can selectively activate some part, but we didn't control the orientation of the liquid metal interconnection. Okay, so next question is, thank you for wonderful talk. Is there any possible region for different conductivities of LMP networks depending on polymer net metrics, while pristine LMP show the similar conductivity regardless of polymers. So of course, uh, there's a, like uh, they show the different conductivity because the uh, conductivity is related to the uh, how they form the some microstructure. Because the uh, initially, once we you mix the polymer and the liquid metal, they have a different some phase separation. Of course, even though they are initially insulating, they are they have a different structure. So therefore, even though we activate the, all of the some parts with our acoustic waves, still they may have a different some conductivity because of different microstructure. Thank you. So next question is: uh, It's very interesting. It's surprising that the resistivity was maintained in the stretchable state through the nano size. Uh, particles by controlling the size of the liquid metal. Is it possible to form a semiconducting layer with no change in resistance, even if small particles are changed to semiconducting oxide larger than liquid metal? So this is a very good question. Actually, our concept may be expanded to the semiconducting layer, but semiconducting layer is more challenging because the, uh, our conductor's uh, thickness is like uh, more than like a 10 micrometer. So if we use the, our some concept to the semiconducting layer, the thickness should be a, like a nanometer scale. So therefore, even though it theoretically can be applicable to the semiconducting system, but still I have a no idea actually to make a, this concept to the semiconducting layer. But in principle, it should be applicable to them. I have one quick, quick question. Yeah. So you show that yours, uh, the liquid metal substrate can be stretched 
more than 500%. So yeah. I'm wondering what happens when it is stretched more than like 600 or 700. So it's depending on the uh, what kind of the polymer and the software we are using. So if we change the polymer polymer to the like a PVDF, which can be like a stretch it up to like a four thousand percent, and then we also can stretch the some our conductor up to the four thousand percent. It depending on the what kind of the polymer we're gonna select for using. Oh, so in such cases, still resistance doesn't change, right? A little bit changed, but not so much. So like uh, four thousand percent, their changes are like uh, less than the, like uh, thirty percent. So not so large. Thank you so much. So I think this is the. Oh, so here's one more question. Yeah, thank you for wonderful talk. I'm not familiar with this field. You mainly did mechanical strain test using stretchable substrate. Generally, is there a standard to what extent mechanical properties should be shown to be applied to e-skin or wearable electronics? So there's a no actual standard because, so actually, ideally, if we can directly stretch the, some devices or sim film, it is ideal. But in reality, we cannot handle the sim film or sim electronic devices. Therefore, instead of actually getting the, some data from strain tests, we're just observing the like a critical some point to make uh, some crack or some fractures. So we are just uh, seeing the uh, actual result for fracturing or some cracking. Of course, uh, recently there's uh, some method to use the uh, some like a uh, film one water. We just put the same film on the water and stretch it. But as I mentioned in the, my final part, we found that the interface is very important and what kind of substrate we are using is very important for fracture behavior of the same film. So therefore, it is a very complicated and actually there's a no standard for this kind of characterization. Thank you so much for your great talk and answer, uh, answering the question. Thank you so much. Thank you.